Windsor Castle. Of all Britain's royal palaces, none is older, larger, or more loved. This magnificent thousand-year-old fortress is no museum. It's a vast, living castle. Even though I've been here the year, there's still parts of the castle I've not been into. Home to the Queen since childhood, Windsor is also the place from which the royal family take their name. Prince Harry's side have broken through. Prince Harry Brexit The Queen's children and grandchildren have come to love this kingdom within a kingdom. For the first time, unprecedented access has been granted to the inner life of the castle. This is an historic portrait of an entire year inside the royal domain. So I sit here and he sits there, is it Yes, When the Queen and her government entertain world leaders on grand state occasions, they come to Windsor. Take it in quick and get back here. This is where the royal family celebrate their most important occasions. Can you pass the salt, please? We'll meet the 300 people who live and work here. This is, just, this is just pure gold. And discover what it is like to serve the monarch in her grandest home. Smart as a button stick. At Windsor, Crown and community live and work side by side. Oi, any good, are they? Beautiful, absolutely excellent. <laughs> Organic, surely, is yes. it? Yes, they are. <laughs> Good. We've lived here as in a home, very much more so than, than everybody since perhaps Queen Victoria. And I think that's what gives it its attraction and its strength. There's a coherent community which starts with the fact that Queen is here. It's quite a, it's quite a large it's good group, isn't it? It would still go if she wasn't, but it would be a completely different atmosphere. Above all the pomp, the history and the grandeur, Everyone at Windsor knows that this is the place the Sovereign calls home. A million people from all over the world visit the Queen's Castle every year. The man in charge of keeping both the visitors and the residents happy is the castle superintendent, Major Alan Denman, ex-Welsh Guards. I lived in a lot of houses in the army and I've always named my house after my favourite football ground, Anfield. But obviously when we came to Windsor Castle, I couldn't very well put that outside the house, so uh, it sits in there. We now obviously live in Garza House. <laughs> I like to start off today with a good walk around the castle and just make sure everything's all right, picking up any problems and um, putting it right. One year into his new job, at a castle nearly a thousand years old, Major Denman is still something of a new boy. You know, some of my staff have been here sort of 30 odd years and, uh, you know, a, a year is nothing. And, uh, you know, a hundred years in the life of the castle is, is nothing. Some people spend their entire working life at the castle. Annette Wilkins started here in 1974. She's now the Queen's housekeeper. I think, first and foremost, it's a home, and whose home it is, that's the most important to all of us, the Queen, the Sovereign. And we're responsible for the whole of the castle, within the castle. State apartments, private suites, guest suites, some offices, and staff areas. Directly above the housekeeper's corridor is the Grand Corridor. It runs along the private wing in a corner of the 13-acre castle. Here lie the private quarters of the Queen and her family. At present, we're preparing for the Queen coming back on Friday. Furniture is in the centre because we're putting traffic wax on the floorboards. The Queen will come back here for most weekends of the year, wherever her travels have taken her. Faith Tarby's in her second year as a housemaid at Windsor Castle. I was brought up in a very traditional British home in South Africa, and Her Majesty was always at our dinner table. We had her portrait 
hanging on the wall. And uh, my mum was a great lover of the royal family and Her Majesty. And um, from a tiny little girl, I used to dream about serving the Queen one day. And here I am. Through more than 40 reigns, Windsor Castle has been remodelled and extended many times. But no monarch, no war, has had as much impact as a single light bulb one morning in 1992. A builder's lamp placed too close to a curtain sparked an inferno which swept through the grandest sections of the castle. It took 16 hours to quell the flames. Apart from the Queen, no one knows Windsor better than Prince Philip. He's lived here for more than 50 years. It was he who took overall charge of the Great Restoration. The family keep a charred souvenir in pride of place. I thought it was all fun. <laughs> a reminder of the... Because it finished, it stopped here at the, at, the, at the end of this room, the fire. That's new and that's old. And it, and, and it came to about here. But <clears throat> the whole place had to be redecorated anyway. At the time of the fire, these rooms had been stripped for maintenance work. The, the, the point was that, of course, there was nothing in here when, at the time of the fire. The whole of the, uh, all the furniture was out, all the pictures and curtains and carpets and everything was out. So, um, uh, we were able to put it all back again. If Windsor is home, Buckingham Palace is the royal office. Here, the royal household team have just started planning the grandest royal occasion of the year a special banquet for the French president, Jacques Chirac. The evening is to celebrate a hundred years of the Entente Cordiale, the enduring bond of friendship between Britain and France. It's to be held in November at Windsor. This is the guest list, which has been approved by everyone, the master and, and the queen and the private secretaries. This one is for the prime minister, Tony Blair and his wife. He's one of our regulars. <laughs> I probably let them dry for longer, so I don't smudge them. And I pile them up, unsealed, and then we have someone else check them all. And they have to be checked twice before they can go out. This is no ordinary state banquet. The Queen has approved a revolutionary plan. Les Miserables, the West End musical, will be performed at the castle. The master of the household, Vice Admiral Sir Tom Blackburn, is responsible for all royal hospitality. He is pondering one of the trickiest aspects of the banquet, the seating plan. When the Queen came to the throne, all state banquets were held at Buckingham Palace. But then a certain prince resurrected an Edwardian idea. Might guests not prefer to dine at Windsor Castle? I initiated that idea. There was absolute hell to pay. It was just, uh, ye gods, how are we going to organize it? You know? What are we going to do about the household cavalry? Uh, uh, where's the guard of honor going to be? Um, uh, how are we going to, what where's the procession going to go? Where are we going, you know. That, it's so easy if you do the same thing every time. You know precisely what's going to happen at Buckingham Palace. But if you suddenly move it somewhere else, you've got to rethink everything. I mean, every, I think everybody enjoyed it, but it was a sort of ye gods, or now what? You know? These days, the Windsor staff are old hands at state occasions. They start planning six months in advance. We'll be coming in through that door. The food team are known as F Branch. In charge are Andrew Farquharson and Mark Flanagan. They've just had the banquet menu approved by the Queen. They're confident that it will impress even the French. The craftsman of Sea Branch will be responsible for all the antique chairs, sofas, and tables required for a state occasion. But for now, they have smaller, though equally important, pieces to look after. What we've got here is furniture from the Duke's study. This little sofa table, the wood, is calamander, which is part of the ebony family. And this is in the Duke's study under his library under his bookcase. They're here most weekends and we tend to 
go up during the week prior to them coming back on a Friday to make sure everything is as it should be because as you can appreciate it's a home as well as a castle Another head of department is also preparing for the presidential visit. Lady Roberts, the Royal Librarian, is curator of Windsor's priceless collection of manuscripts and drawings. She's assembling a special Entente Cordiale exhibition. The Queen has asked us to put out some things which will be of relevance to France in the Crimson Drawing Room where it will be seen by the Queen and the President and also by the other guests on that evening. What I have to judge is how much we're trying to stress the relaxed nature of the visit and how much we're trying to stress the more formal nature of it. This is one that I think we definitely want Louis-Philippe being led by Queen Victoria into St George's Hall with this magnificent display of gold and silver plate. I think we want these ones swapping round. The team must pick a handful of pieces from the library's 300,000 books, drawings and prints. The material that we gather together for these displays is nearly all kept, stored and accessible to visiting scholars and researchers here at Windsor. It's always an interesting challenge to provide a display for visiting foreign leaders. There are certainly some countries where we would find it quite difficult to give such deep and rich historical coverage, but we've always got something. This is a state occasion, not a private one, so the costs will be met from the civil list, the funds the Queen receives to cover her duties as head of state. For all Windsor's long experience of state occasions, it's never had to squeeze a West End production in two. Les Miserables does not travel light, and that could be a problem. Four tons of stage equipment are being piled into the Waterloo chamber, except that's not what it's called anymore. For one night only, it has been diplomatically renamed the Music Room. Production manager Jerry Donaldson is transforming this grandest of staterooms into a theatre, carefully. Lighting and sound are going to be hanging off this truss, which hangs from the, uh, from the ceiling, from the chandelier points in the ceiling. Then tomorrow the stage comes in, sits underneath it, and then we've got some, uh, a backdrop to hang up as well. The Waterloo Chamber is not just losing its name for a night. Also going are some of the generals who helped Wellington defeat the French in 1815. It is for their own safety, though, rather than for any diplomacy, that these old soldiers must come down from their noble perches. Yeah, handling big canvases like this when you're taking them over balconies, it's always worrying. We're seeing some Lawrences coming down. Um, they're, uh, they're considered too vulnerable in the position where they are to leave them there, and we thought about covering them up. but. It seems easier, though it doesn't look easier, to actually take them completely away. One, two, three, up. Keep coming up. Enormous care must be taken when dropping national heroes over 20-foot balconies. While some pictures go down, others go up. In the Crimson Drawing Room, Lady Roberts' new exhibition for tomorrow's guests is going into place. It must be perfect from every angle. Because we're putting the display up in this wonderful room where there are mirrors behind the display, the back of the display has to look at least respectable. And this is double-sided <laughs> sticky tape, which um, Rini and I are preparing. And it's a team effort, this, because you have to get the, um, the tension right. We don't normally do this sort of work kneeling on the floor of the Crimson Drawing Room, however. <laughs> Hello, Castle Superintendent, can I help you? For Major okay. Alan Denman, this is the greatest challenge he's faced since arriving at Windsor. People have got to be fed, gentlemen ushers to come in, yeoman the guard, 
staircase party. Duty electrician to sort out. Make sure, make sure he's on duty. Uh, so, you know, a lot happening. For now, the 17th century Queen's drawing room must double up as a warehouse. These are the lances which have been taken down. You can see who we got here. I can never remember the names now. Well, it's Pope Pius, which is obviously the most uh, famous one. Major Denman's prime concern, however, is what the theatre crew are getting up to. I knew it was going to be big, but I didn't realise it was going to be this big. So how many people will actually be still on that stage with the, with the orchestra? 25-piece orchestra, and I think 41 in the cast. Quite yeah. a few. Six, and any, six, anyone six. knows? Michael Ball? Yeah. Must, must have heard of him. No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> lots of, lots of ex-cast members of Les Mis, oh, but good. like famous, famous ones. So. No, I have heard of Michael Ball. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one subject at Windsor which nobody jokes about. So we've got extinguishers in the back. Yeah. We've got a group of extinguishers in the, in the front ground oh, vestibule cool, yeah. salon. Uh, we've got both foam and CO2. Oh, sure. uh, so we're covering all the risks. That the 1992 fire was started by a spotlight, and Jerry's got 150 of them. So I think because of the fire, they obviously they're obviously get a little bit twitchy here about what we're doing, because I think they're, it was a little bit bigger than the health and safety guy who I spoke to earlier on expecting, but uh, it's reassuring them that we actually do know what we're doing, do you know what I mean? So uh, I can understand, it's quite a big sort of lump of steel we're hanging in their uh, very nice hall here, do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, but it does, it does look quite overpowering, doesn't it? <laughs> it's quite big. <laughs> For Mark Flanagan and his team, the countdown has started in the kitchen. Having the food-loving French to dinner adds extra pressure. But the Queen's chef has chosen impeccably British ingredients. OK, well, this is the beef fillet for tomorrow's menu. It's Scottish Aberdeen. We went up and saw them earlier on in the year. And uh, so that they've, they've very kindly trimmed it all up for us. So all I need to now do is uh, cut it into the portion size. British beef, it may be, but the wines will be French, as is the man in charge of them, Robert Large, the yeoman of the cellars. We have the, uh, the champagne for the toast, which is going to be Paul Auger. Then we follow with the uh, Chassin de Montrachet uh, Les Masures, which is going to be for the first course. Chassin de Montrachet is the king of the Burgundy region. The second course, anything with beef, we choose in the uh, Chateau Léoville Poiferé, 1990. A very good Krug, 1982, for the pudding, which is a magnum this time. We tried to actually get more Krug, 82, just in case, and it wasn't possible to get any in the country. OK, so that's how rare they are. <laughs> At the end of a long day, the drama has already begun in the Waterloo chamber. The set is wrong. Uh, a little bit of a, little bit of a disaster earlier on, but... Uh... We un unfolded the back cloth for the first time and went to hang it up. It's been specially printed. However, they've uh, managed to print it the wrong way around. The logos should be in the centre and the paintings should be on the outside. So, bit of a bit of a major sweat on when I found that out. But uh, I've managed to get another one tomorrow. But I have to send somebody up to Manchester to pick it up as soon as they finish rehearsal. We'll get this one down, get the new one up, get it all stretched and looking lovely. So it's going well. Apart from that. Everything must be perfect long before the guests appear. The Queen returns from Buckingham Palace this afternoon. At 5 p.m., her meticulous pre-banquet inspection will begin. We're using the green drawing room um, this evening for pre-dinner drinks. Also, the crimson drawing room, um, which I need now to just move a little bit more furniture to make some space, as there is 136 guests. Uh, we need plenty of room in the room, so I'll move this sofa and then there's plenty of room also so they can see the display which Royal Collection have put out um, in connection with the French visit. And it just gives them a bit more room, makes it a little bit more spacious. 
we're used to doing these now and hopefully it should run like clockwork, um, which it normally does. Um, I'm just, you know, just hope everybody turns up on time and everybody's got a drink and if they've all got a drink and they're having dinner and they're all happy, then I'm happy. Nowhere are preparations more scrupulous than in the private quarters where the most important guests will stay. Even the soap will have been personally approved by the Queen. For President Chirac and his wife, it will be the principal guest apartment, known simply as Suite 240. Orderly chaos has ensued in the chamber formerly known as Waterloo. The Queen will be particularly interested to see what has happened to one of her favourite staterooms, but the show's producers, led by Sir Cameron McIntosh, have only just arrived for rehearsals. Everybody's turned up now, so everybody's got an opinion about it, you know. <coughs> um, we're a bit late, but we on schedule. Orchestra didn't turn up. We're supposed to be seating the orchestra now, so they're a bit late. It's midday, and the press have a chance to interview the stars. Sir Cameron McIntosh is delighted to be staging a revolutionary French musical in this royal setting. I have to say, I did immediately think of the irony of the evening that... Um, this show, of all shows, uh, would be taking place in this particular hall under the eyes of Wellington. Who was it that chose uh, Les Mis as the, the, the most suitable musical to present? I, I, I suppose in, in the spirit of the Entente Cordiale, it's going to offend everybody. <laughs> 2 p.m. The Queen is now on her way. Tony Martin is the castle flagman. It's his job to raise the royal standard the moment the Queen is inside the ramparts. He prepares to make his silent fanfare. I'm just getting the uh, state visit flag ready for a Majesty coming in. Uh, it's approximately half past two. And this will stay up until the state visit's finished. One of the largest flags, it's 24 feet by 12. Very large flag. Tony checks the Queen's progress with the police at the castle gates. Well, it's not changed again, has it? I was told half two. I was told by my, uh, my boss that the Queen was uh, coming approximately half past two. But now I've just phoned up and they've informed me that uh, it's quarter past three now. So we just have to wait up here until she arrives. So it's going down and then coming back up again. The grand table is nearly ready for inspection by the Queen. And all 952 pieces of cutlery and 816 glasses will be washed up by dawn. Glasses, toasting glass with champagne, white wine with the first course, red wine with the beef, champagne with the sweet, port. I'm uh, simply measuring up using a rule of thumb, so the knives and the fork and all the cutlery and the plate, exactly the same edge away from the table. Uh, this evening I'll be a footman and I'll be remaining in the room with the guests and I'll be doing very...
area services from putting the hot plates in front of the guests, serving vegetables, doing the sauces. After the banquet's actually finished, the table will be stripped down. Each item, such as the plates we have, will be done by hand. Uh, that's what just washing, then it's rinsed, and then it's actually buffed dry by hand. Um, we also brush it as well, sometimes wet, sometimes dry, to make sure there's no polish or residue left in any of the workings on the outside. Um, once we've then finished and they're fully dried, they'll be counted, usually into piles of ten, and then wrapped up in cling film to keep the air away from them to stop any tarnishing of the works. The, the essence is that, that guests really would never have to ask for anything at the table, so a cruet is always within reach without having to, to, to stretch across anybody. Um, and each um, individual guest will get a little uh, dish with their own uh, butter, so that again, um, nobody has to trouble anybody else in, in, in feeling that so they're embarrassed to ask for the butter because it's halfway across the table. The perfectionism extends to the butter itself. Everyone will have their own dish, each pat stamped with the crown. Break off a piece of butter. Try and keep them all the same size, not too big. And then place it on the paddles. It takes a while to get the knack. Nice ball. Then you dip the stamp in hot water. Place the ball on the stamp and then you, there you go. And apparently the Queen used to do them when she was a little girl and the Queen Mother. It's quite, it can be quite therapeutic. The Duke of Edinburgh has three and the Queen has two. From the top of the round tower, there's still no sign of the Queen. It's nearly a gale force coming up, and it's starting to rain. Uh, so it's, it's not too bad. It'll blow over, I think. Here we go. The Fender Smiths have just a few minutes left to line up all 136 chairs before the Queen begins her pre-banquet rounds. Because we have the official length of stick from uh, back of chair to uh, the table, which I believe is about 27 inches. That gives just enough area for people to, if they, once we put the chairs together, it gives the people to come in and put the champagne in and things like that, just to walk in, and the guests enough room to stand in front when they're ready for their, their dinner. So. Uh, this is oh, that's us. Yeah. This is uh, yeah. We're hoping to get this in a, the uh, Olympics in London. <laughs> the stick and chair. We reckon it'll, it'll be a winner. Myself and Mr. Turner might be just too old, but I'm sure we can train up two whippersnappers to uh, do stick and chair. <laughs>
state occasions can be a little nerve-wracking. Castle guests might require a little extra fortification in their rooms. Okay, we got the, uh, the dry sherry here, which is La Ina sherry. And we've got some whiskey, famous grass whiskey, which is the favorite, uh, the favorite uh, whiskey for the Duke of Edinburgh. And we've got golden gin. So these three decanters are going to go into the, uh, the suite of uh, President Chirac. Some people may say it's a mini bar for us, we call it a suite. Six months of planning, diplomacy and hard work are coming to a climax. Now is the moment when everyone will know if they've got it right. No one has attended more royal banquets than the Queen. Her say is final. I wasn't sure about this one, but I... Well, we were asked about moral matters quite a long time ago. Yeah, I think it's all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks lovely. So I sit here and he sits there, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Something, isn't it? It's quite the table has passed. The Queen's attention now turns to the set of Les Miserables. She's keen to ensure that everyone can see properly. Yeah. That's okay for the house, isn't it? You can see over the orchestra, can we? Yes. Because the orchestra is right at the back now. So the orchestra are playing behind, yeah, behind, the, 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 behind the, the, the signals. Even after all these years, Her Majesty is still impressed. You know, when people come in, it's quite something, isn't it? It is now, it's actually Now that the Queen has approved the arrangements, all departments get their final briefings. We just want to have a quick run through and make sure that everybody knows the dishes and the procedure that we're going to follow, okay? This is going to turn into, you know, a, a conveyor belt, for the want of a better term. This is a small idea of what it's going to be. You've got to imagine that this is only one side of the oval. This is the, the finished dish, half of the finished dish, okay? And we'll, we'll have the same procedure again, percentage of it pre-built on trays, ready to come to this lineup, okay? Don't forget, we have about a minute, a minute and a half for each flat, and we have to push, okay? Okay, thank you very much. It's a three-course meal, which is slightly different from what we have at Banquet. Um, it's, it's a fish course, a main course, a sweet. The red light, that means once you've got the plates and your food, um, if you can all stand behind your service point where you're serving um, in a line and then once I'm, hap once I'm happy then I will, I will switch to the green light where then everybody will serve together. Thank you very much. The pre-drinks are champagne and soft drinks only plus the drinks for the uh, members of the royal families. Service number six, Mr. Fe Mess. Special request, you have uh, Princess Royal, who's having freshly squeezed orange juice. Only freshly squeezed orange juice, nothing else. After the banquet, Mr. Road and Mr. Ford, liqueurs are done from the uh, Garter's room. Yep. Cigars will be Mr. Clasper and Mr. Smith. Is that all? Uh, yep. Okay, yep. to everyone? Okay. Thank you. Seven thirty. At last, the guests begin to arrive. The royal family and the Chiracs will be joined by the Blairs, leading French and British politicians, and a selection of prominent French expats. But all is not well at the castle gates. Revolutionary fervor is stirring outside as well as in. That's the protesters. It's a. Uh... Yeah, it's more like a football match than a state occasion, but yeah. The presence of the Prime Minister, several cabinet ministers and the world's media has drawn hundreds of pro-hunt supporters to Windsor. The eggs are flying and some VIPs are being delayed. In the castle kitchens, the Queen's chef Mark Flanagan is unaware of the chaos outside. 
He's sticking to the agreed timetable. You're going to need to be here. Sorry, Stuart. Yeah? You need to be here, ready sure. for me, yeah? We're, we're 15 minutes away from starting our, our assembly line. And, uh, and, and for us, the main event, it's, it's, that's how close it is we're now. We're, it's, it's the nervy time here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A further hitch. A deeply apologetic president has been delayed by 30 minutes. The Duke of Edinburgh reassures the Chiracs that all is well. In St George's Hall, Steve Marshall puts the final touches to the table in his customary footwear, acquired on a plane. They are British Airways socks. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Farquharson must now liaise between the kitchens, the serving staff and the Queen. It would be wrong if I wasn't a bit nervous. It's just making sure that we can combine the requirements of Mark to make it look as wonderful as possible with the requirements of the Queen to have it in front of her when she wants it in front of her, basically. So um, it's, it's a fine line. And as you know, chefs never want to send their food until the last possible second, because the longer it stays in a hot cupboard, the, 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 the less appetizing it looks. So Mark's, Mark's pulling from one end, and you know we're, we're pulling from the other. And I'm the guy that sort of is keeping an eye on everything and hoping it's going to work. Outside, the mob haven't managed to storm the gates, but they are still holding up the traffic. Delays upstairs, no delays downstairs. News of the evening's hold-ups still hasn't reached the kitchens. Let's go, come on. So just all out, let's go. More so. According to Mark's precise schedule, the guests should now be seated and listening to speeches. Except they aren't. They're only just making their way through to dinner. How many? Two. More salt. Yes, yeah. Let's go, let's go, come on. In here. Eight fifteen and right on time Mark's hit his deadline. The first course is on its way to the banquet. Unfortunately not everyone is so punctual. Uh, Master just came in and said that we were running ten to fifteen minutes behind schedule, which is slightly unfortunate because Mark's got everything ready to go on time, so um, We'll just have to go with it. I also understand the president came in late, so it just has a sort of knock-on effect. We're now sort of slightly, you know, we've cooked it and it's ready to go, so one hopes it just doesn't spoil too much. Oh, uh, so, 20 minutes late, what a laugh that is. It does make you feel a little, sort of, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, a bit disappointed that the fish is not going to be as, as perfect as I wanted it. The croup's gonna go a little soggy, but, uh, you know. The guests are finally taking their places. You know where you are. I think I'm along here somewhere. I'm gonna... Mrs. Blair helps the Prime Minister find his seat. He's placed between the French Minister of Defence, Michel Alliot-Marie, and the fashion designer, Nicole Fay. President Chirac sits between the Queen and a professor of French from Nottingham University. Mr. President, Madame Chirac, I recall with great pleasure my visit to France last April, and I am pleased to have the opportunity to welcome you both to Windsor Castle tonight. Mark has reworked his timings. The second course will not go the way of the first. You, you've got plenty of time. Now slow down and make it perfect. Yeah, there's not enough in there. There's not enough in there. I would ask you to rise and drink a toast to the President and people of France. Be not on the earth.
John, you need to make sure I don't no no holes in the service, sir. Yeah. See, that's gone to seed, huh? Yeah. You can't serve that. Que votre majesté avait employé the president de thanks his host. En 1996, s'il est vrai que nous ne conduisons pas du même côté de la route. Under buggers, all go to stand down there. Footman, opposite the numbers there, okay? With the toasts over, it's finally time to eat. The lights are switched to green. Getting it in as quick as possible, given this quite delay, so it's been it's been there for a little bit and it's been ready for a little bit too long, maybe. The first course is on the table. Andrew is back in the kitchen to oversee the beef. Um, the Queen prefers her beef to be slightly better cooked. So we uh, try and make sure that she, she, she has the one that is. And we've identified, she's very good at identifying which is normally for her. And this one is just a little bit of parsley on the top. So that means that she knows exactly which one's for her. She's very happy for everybody else to have hers, their meat done, perhaps slightly rarer, but she herself prefers it to be well done. So uh, we do that, her party. Nice and hot, keep the door closed, huh? The main course is served. Even now, every vegetable is still being scrutinized. Back again, the next one you take is the one you're serving, okay? Where's the other one? Let's give it to him, he's taking it in. Take it in quick and get back here. You're back again, okay? Three. How are you doing? They're doing marvellous. <laughs> Only pudding remains. It's done now. I can't do any more. Just fingers crossed. The guests finish their dinner, quite unaware that a further delay has afflicted the other end of their evening. One set of revolutionaries has held up another. The cast of Les Miserables, still in costume from their first performance of the evening, have been delayed en route from the West End. <laughs> Are you happy? Yeah, 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 at the moment, yeah. Nearly ten minutes late. Yeah, I know. We'll, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll, as soon as we get everybody in, we'll get it straight up and then go in order to. In the state apartments, the evening is progressing seamlessly with the formal presentation of gifts. Oh, don't go. <laughs> the Queen gives the President a silver plate engraved with the words Entente Cordiale. In return, she receives a Sèvres vase and a scarf from Madame Chirac. As the guests make their way through to the newly christened music room, everyone agrees that Mark's dinner has been superb. 
I asked uh, Queen Nam if uh, it was the, f the cook was French. She said, no, really, it was English. I said, I congratulated her because it was really good. So, I mean, you know, I've been living in England now for quite a while, so I can cope with the English cuisine very, very well. And I think you do have some very, very good cook. And the cook here was excellent. So, so Cameron McIntosh's guest, will you follow me, please? Follow me. Michael Ball undergoes last minute adjustments to his makeup. Quick as we can, please, folks. Thank you. Quick as we can. Okay, thanks very much, ladies and gents. Here we go. Thank you. <coughs> this show is not starting without the real leading lady. This is what five, six months worth of planning at least gone into this. Uh, nice to see. It. I don't have any children other than my boys, so I've just this is like having a baby for me. Who am I? Who am I? That man bears no more guilt than you. State banquets always demand the highest standards, whoever the guests. Tonight, the staff have risen to the occasion. The plan worked well. Uh, everything sort of came together, and any little mistakes that were there, you know, weren't seen on the night. A century of friendship between Britain and France has been marked with a banquet fit for a queen. Of colours, most of which have just been valued at about a quarter of a million pounds each.